Greetings, fellow Hoobians. Well, it's finally time to talk about it. Yes, we have finally reached the point that I've been waiting for since I started this these videos. And no, I'm not talking about Hartnell's final story as a doctor. No, we have finally reached the point in which Dodo leaves. Now, I know what some of you are thinking, oh, Aria, you must hate Dodo, blah, 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 blah. Well, yeah, I kind of do. And I have nothing against the actress Jackie Lane. I thought she did a great job playing the character. It's just, I don't really like the character of Dodo. That's the thing. She just kind of irks me with her stupidity as we saw in the Celestial Toymaker. So, yeah. But, anyway, so... Last time we saw Steven depart, and this time we're going to see Dodo depart, as well as the Doctor getting two new companions, his last two, Ben and Polly, who of course would later become the first two companions of the second Doctor, Patrick Troughton, but we'll get into that later, trust me. So anyway, here's my review of that episode, The War Machines. Here we go. The doctor lands in London near the post office tower. The doctor is unsettled by a strange sensation, by a sensation of strange energy nearby. Visiting the newly completed tower, the doctor and Dodo meet Professor Brett, the creator of Wotan, will operating thought analog, an advanced problem-solving computer that thinks for itself. Curiously, Wotan even knows what the word TARDIS stands for. In four days' time, on Sea Day, whatever the hell that means, Wotan will be linked to the other mate to other major computers to take them over, including those of the White House, Cape Kennedy, and the Royal Navy. Wait, 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 so you're telling me that back in the 60s, the White House, Cape Kennedy, and the Royal Navy had computers? What? Man, this raises a whole lot of questions, doesn't it? Anyway, Dodo goes with Polly, Brett's secretary, to the local Inferno nightclub, where they meet Abel Seaman, Ben Jackson, well, the doctor attends a Royal Scientific Club meeting about Wotan, led by Sir Charles Summer. Before Brett can depart the GPO Tower for the meeting, he is hypnotized by a humming noise emitted by Wotan. He then fetches Crimpton, an, le an electronics colleague, from the meeting and takes him to Wotan, who was likewise possessed by the computer. Major Green, the chief of security in the tower, is also taken over and sends, Wotan, and sends Wotan's control signals to Dodo at the nightclub would be a telephone. Going to the tower, Wotan tells her, Doctor Who is required. Bring him here. Uh, I'm pretty sure that Doctor Who is not the Doctor's actual name. I mean, seriously, that is one of the biggest mysteries of the show. What is the Doctor's real name? I mean, seriously, w will it ever be revealed? <sighs> Sheesh, Louise. Anyway. Wotan has concluded that mankind cannot develop the world any further and intends to take over using army of war machines, mobile computers like itself. Using its hypnotic control, Wotan enlists a workforce to construct 12 war machines around London, which is the first capital to become controlled. One of these machines is built in a warehouse in Covent Garden, close to the Inferno nightclub. Wait, 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 I just realized something. This nightclub is named Inferno. And yet, there's an episode of the third Doctor's era, which is also called Inferno. Foreshadowing? You make the call! Dodo, the Doctor, Ben and Polly leave for, leave for Sir Charles's residence, where the Doctor has been invited to stay, in a taxi that drops off a tramp by the nightclub. Looking for a place to sleep, the tramp discovers Brennan and the workforce building Machine 3 in the warehouse. The tramp is caught and, kills, and killed when he tries to escape. Uh, okay, I wasn't quite aware of the fact that tramps can be male, but oh well, I'll buy that, I guess. The next day, Dodo manages to get the doctor to telephone Brett at the GPO tower, and he is nearly possessed by Wotan. Thinking the doctor is now controlled, Dodo gives herself away by revealing that the war machines are being constructed in strategic points in London. Wow, Dodo's being smart for once! Yay! The doctor breaks Wotan's hypnotic control over her, and she and she is sent to stay with Sir Charles's wife in the country to recover. 
When Polly fails to show up to a luncheon with Ben, the doctor sends Lad to investigate the area around the nightclub. After reading about the death of the tramp in the newspaper, Ben also discovers the war machine in the warehouse, now fully assembled and being tested under Major Green's supervision. Ben is detected by the machine and caught by the now hypnotized Polly. However, Ben is spared when Polly states that Wotan requires all the slave labor we can find. While working with the others, Ben learns that the twelve war machines are soon to attack at noon the next day. He escapes, although seen yet not stopped by Polly, and alerts the doctor and Sir Charles. Polly is sent back to the tower to be punished by Wotan. Under Sir Charles's instruction, an army task force investigates the warehouse, but their weapons are somehow disabled by the war machine. They are forced to retrieve, but when the doctor stands to finally before the war machine as it emerges from the warehouse, it stops. It had not been completely programmed. And that is why the first doctor is, of course, an awesome badass. With the activation of Machine 3, the workmen, including Major Green, are released from its control. Examining the machine's programming, the doctor learns that the eleven others have been built across London and are meant to attack at noon today. Soon after, there are reports of another war machine, Machine 9, taking to the streets, having gone rogue while it was being tested. With the help of the army, the doctor traps the machine in an electromagnetic force field, paralyzing it, and reprograms it to destroy Wotan. Ben goes to the GPO tower ahead of Machine 9 and drags Polly out of the Wotan room as the machine enters and attacks the mobile computer. Krypton is killed, but Wotan is destroyed before it can give the order for the other ten war machines to commence their attack, and Brad and all the others who have been hypnotized return to normal. Ben and Polly meet the Doctor of the TARDIS to explain that Dodo has decided to stay in, L- in London. The Doctor thanks them and heads into the police box, followed by Ben and Polly, who enter the TARDIS with the intent to return Dodo's key, which the Doctor had dropped earlier. Which the Doctor dropped earlier. They are then suddenly whisked off into time and space. Yeah, so Paul. Yeah, so Dodo's departure happened off screen. What the hell? But anyway, let's look at the production of elements of the story, shall we? Wilton refers to the Doctor as Doctor Who, the only time the character is ever given this name within the series narrative, though he was credited as such in the end titles from the start of Season 1 until the end of Season 18 of the classic series, and then again in Series 1 of the new series. Wotan also manages to discern the meaning of the acronym TARDIS. This serial is the only time during the black and white era of the series when the crew of the TARDIS is completely replaced, with the Doctor being the only continuing character. This serial marks the last appearance of the St. John Ambulance emblem on the TARDIS's exterior door until the 11th Doctor's tenure begins in 2010's The Eleventh Hour. The story appears to end on July 20, 1966. The date given in dialogue for the second Doctor story, The Faceless Ones, also set in London, where Ben states that that is the same date when he and Polly joined the TARDIS. The past Doctor Adventures novel, The Time Travelers, by Simon Gurrier, is set in an alternate is set in, al- is set in an alternative reality where the Doctor had not been around to stop Wotan. The villain is never referred to by name, only as the machine, and while he has overthrown thousands while he was overthrown, thousands were left insane by his mind control, and Brendan was reduced to a technologically backward dictatorship. Yeesh. Not that the whole Brexit thing was bad, but this? That's even worse. In the 2013 Big Finish Productions release, Persuasion, the Doctor makes reference to this story. At one point, the Doctor tells Will Aerosmith to go to the computer room, but don't touch the box marked Wotan. The decision to send more episodes on present day Earth was taken because the producers felt that the audience was becoming bored with purely historical episodes that had been a major element of the show to date. As a result, this story marks the beginning of the turn away from historical stories. The next two historical stories, The Smugglers, which immediately follows the war machines, and Season 4's The Highlanders, were to be the last purely historical stories until Season 19's Black Orchid. And you know what? I'm not actually bored with historicals. I mean, hell, I love them. In fact, my all-time favorite Hardnell story is a historical. Working titles for the story included The Computers. The idea for the story came about when Kit Pedler was being interviewed for a position as science advisor to the series. The producers asked all of the interviewees what would happen if the recently built post office tower somehow took over. Peller suggests that it would be the work of a rogue computer that communicated with the outside world by means of the telephone system. 
The producers liked this suggestion and not only offered Pendler the job, but developed the idea into a script, one of the few to feature a story idea by credit. Pat Dunlop was then hired to write a full set of teleplays for Pendler's idea, but quit after becoming busy with other work, and the teleplays were subsequently done by Ian Stewart Black, who had also written the previous serial, The Savages. Only one war machine prop was actually constructed. The production team changed the numbers to represent the different machines. The titling style of each episode in this serial differs from standard titles of other serials. Instead of a title overlay after the Doctor Who logo has faded, the screen shifts to a solid background containing four inversely colored rectangles aligned down the left-hand side to represent to an old stock computer punch card. The title, one word at a time, scrolls upward, The War Machines, with the final flash displaying the complete title on two lines. Another flash reveals the writer, the next flash reveals the word episode, and the final flash shows the actual episode number. All of the lettering displayed in this titling sequence is shown in a retro computer font. Each of the four episodes' title sequences have slight variations to them. Hmm, interesting, isn't it? Sandra Brand appeared in the Macro Terror as to John Harvey. John Wolf later played Sam in the moon base and fell in the Green Death. Frank Jarvis ever played Ankin Underworld and Scarred in the Power of Crawl. Michael Grace provided the voice of a policeman heard in episode 4. Wotan received a credit as and Wotan at the end of the first three episodes, the only time a fictional character was credited as itself in the series. Jacqueline's contract expired midway through the, midway through the production of the story. She does not appear again after episode 2. Dodo's off-screen departure is related to the Doctor by Polly. Mm. Aside from its soundtrack recorded off air by fans, this serial was lost in the junk of episodes in the 1970s. The master videotapes for the story were the last of those starring William Hartnell to be junked, surviving until 1974. 60mm film tele-recording tele copies held by BBC Enterprises were also the last of their kind to be destroyed, surviving until 1978 shortly before the junking of material was halted by the intervention of fan Ian Levine. In 1978, a collector in Australia provided a copy of Episode 2. Later in 1984, copies of all four episodes were returned from Nigeria. Episodes 2, 3, and 4 all had cuts to them, but most have been restored due to a combination of the other copy of, of Episode 2, material used in a promotional item on, on the BBC's Blue Peter, and sister clips from Australia. Some of, the, uh, some of the restored footage did not have its accompanying soundtrack, and so the missing sound was restored from the off-air recordings. Nice. The War Machines is the last surviving complete serial from the William Hartnell era. The following serial, The Smugglers, is complete, is entirely missing, while Harvest's final serial, The Tenth Planet, is missing episode 4. The serial is also the only one featuring Michael Crace and Annette Wills as Ben and Polly that is complete. Ah. To date, only episodes 3 and 4 do not exist in their entirety as was originally intended. Episode 3 is missing a visual, brief bit of dialogue with Crimpton talking. This was replaced in the VHS release with a combination of a shot of Wotan with the accompanying dialogue from the off-air recordings. Episode 3 is also missing around 59 seconds worth of the battle in the warehouse. This scene, however, has not been reinstated for, for the VHS release as it was felt that there wouldn't be enough visual material to drop into the gap. Episode 4 is missing only a small amount of material. The first instance occurs with the man in the telephone box. Part of the continuing close-up of the man talking on the telephone is missing. This was compensated on the VHS release by continuing in audio only over the top of the beginning of the high shot of the phone box. There are also two lines of dialogue missing when Polly reports back to Wotan. The DVD release has all the episodes recreated and restored to their original length, as well as a nine-minute documentary showing how the episodes were reconstructed from all the disparate sources. Wow, that was a lot to talk about for just one episode, huh? But it is kind of interesting, though. So, what do I think about this episode? Well, it has Polly's departure. I'm yeah, sorry. It has Dodo's departure, and it has the introduction of two new companions. So, overall, I give Doctor Who the War Machines. Five sonic screwdrivers out of five. Well, join me next time as we as we go as we experience Ben and Polly's first trip with the Doctor in The Smugglers. Should be pretty interesting if I do say so myself. Anyway, until next time, this is Hooping Queen saying, Oh my giddy out! When I say run, run! I've reversed the polarity of the neutron flow. Would you like a jelly baby? 
Fantastic. Allons-y. Geronimo. Bow ties are cool. Fezzes are cool. And Stetsons are cool.